All right. I want to thank everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon or this morning or whatever time it may be where you are. Uh, my name is Andrew Sattarelli. I'm one of the technical support specialists here at Autodesk for uh, our NASTRAN and NASTRAN NCAD products. Uh, joining me today is Mitch Muncy, the product manager for uh, the NASTRAN line, and we'll be going over some of the, the new features and functionality uh, in the 2017 lineup. Um, before we get started there, just a, a quick overview of the uh, Autodesk Help webinar series. Um, so we do these discussions uh, pretty much on a, a monthly basis, 20 to 40 minutes on, on topics driven by uh, the input from you, the, the customer, the end user. Um, and last uh, month, I think it was, we did a troubleshooting of nonlinear analyses. Before that, it was a Weldman analysis and then uh, getting to the, the fundamentals of modal analyses. Um, if you'd like to sign up, I think everyone here probably already is, but if you're watching on YouTube, um, you can find a link on our Sim, Sim Hub, uh, the Autodesk uh, product forums, or you may have even received a, a direct email. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pass it over to, to Mitch Muncy, who's going to go over some of the new features. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Good morning, everybody. Let me uh, get set up here just a second. There we go. And so I'm just going to, I've got a, a couple quick slides uh, that I can go through to show some of the new features that we've got, as well as I've got a little couple demo models to show that as well. So for those of you who don't know, we had a, another major release of Autodesk Nastran in CAD about six months ago. Um, that was the SAP release. And so hats off really to the development team for the amount of work and effort that they were able to accomplish in the last two or three months of actually hardcore development time. So I think we were able to implement about 30 new features in that time frame. So, um, where, so for, for the presentation here, I've included some of the new features for, for those of you who hadn't seen it from the, the previous release as well. I feel it's kind of important to show the big picture of what we did in the last year to kind of cover all of the, uh, you know, the vision that we had with that, that last year of development work. So speaking of that vision, we really focus in on three key areas. So you'll see that reflected in the agenda here. The first one was the ease of use. So, you know, NASTRAN is extremely capable, you know, it's got a lot of different capabilities built into it. NCAD was really built to solve every engineering problem. And sometimes it feels that way, even for the most straightforward workflows. So a lot of time we spent uh, over the last year was invested in streamlining that, that, that workflow. Uh, for interoperability, we received a lot of tremendous support from the Inventor team in that community. So it's been great for making NCAD work much closer with Inventor. Uh, finally, Nastran has a, a bunch of results that we can look at and sort through and a lot of different things that we can handle there. So we also spend a lot of time and effort in making sure that that's a, a good streamlined, simplified process as well. So jumping into it, looking at the ease of use, one of the, the first things that we've, we were able to accomplish was adding a couple new options as far as the, the loading was concerned. So um, when you're looking at a, a remote force, you know, we had the ability to click on a point. You had to create that point first, but then you could you could use that that point as the the location of the load. But oftentimes, you know, people that work with their models a lot, they already know where those locations are. So now you can just specify it in the uh, in a general coordinate system. Uh, and then another thing that we did was, you know, with NCAD is you have the ability to apply the load in any coordinate system that's ever been created. So every assembly and every part has its own individual coordinate system. So that works out really well if you want to apply a load in, in that, that coordinate system. But, you know, turning those off and on was a, a little bit of a burden. So what we did is if you're working on in a coordinate system already and you have that highlighted, it will display it on the screen so you can see the XYZ coordinate. So if you switch that coordinate system, it'll automatically update it on the screen so you know where and how you're applying those loads and constraints. Next thing that we did um, is a lot of work in making the user interface a lot easier to work with, uh, a lot faster, you know, for a lot of things that just took a little bit extra time. So one of the things we had was the ability to apply bearing loads. You can apply it as a function, and so you could have specified it and just created a, a custom load that followed a certain formula, and they did it that way. So what we did is we made it a lot easier. We actually have a bearing load specific that you can apply and it'll do the, the loading appropriately. And that actually works out really nicely. 
Um, one of my new favorite uh, commands that we have here is this rigid point at center. And so before, if you wanted to apply a rigid uh, element and have the center node at the center of an arc or a circle or a, a cylindrical face, you had to actually create that point and then assign it to it. So now what we've done is there's a new button there that says point at center. And if you select uh, that, what it'll do is it'll create that point for you. It's a sketch point and you can move that later if you want to and adjust it. Um, but it makes it very quick for creating loads and connecting different entities together and things like that. And I'll show, I'll show a little bit about that with the demo. Um, the, the last thing on this one is, is looking at the uh, units in math. So, you know, you've had the ability to create a load in whatever unit system you want, but you had to do the conversion yourself. So now what we've got is you can just type those values in in whatever unit system you want to use and NCAD will automatically convert it for you. So an uh, example here just shows it's in megapascal and we just want to switch it to PC, PS, PSI and it'll do that for us. It also uses um, math. So if you wanted to just say five times that load, you could just type five times that load and it'll automatically include it. And I'll show some examples of what that looks like as well. All right, one of the other things that we did is just to improve the look and feel of the product, especially when we're working with inventors, we changed the color scheme a bit. We updated a couple of the icons. And so you can see not just on the, the big ribbon at the top, but the, the tree on the side as well. It's got a much nicer look and feel to it, much more modern. And you know, one of the things that we did with the SAP release is we added support for inventor representations. So you know, level of details, you can have that in there. And then when you go to NCAD, you can select it and it'll automatically pick the parts. Uh, one of the things that we did with this release is we also added the ability to support that, that CAD view inside of NCAD, and you can actually turn entities on and off and you can exclude it from the analysis. And one of the things that's important about that was, you know, you could always have just not meshed a part in NCAD and it would allow you to run the analysis. It would give you a little bit of a warning saying, hey, you might've forgot something here. But once you go and run the analysis, you can just run it on the parts that you want. So what this allows you to do now is you can go up front and say, like, I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore this, this, this. I'm just going to run it on these parts of the assembly. And that way you're not, you know, going back and forth with the level of detail. You're not tweaking anything and it gets some really good, uh, get, an, get an analysis on exactly what you're looking for there. All right. So let's just kind of walk through some of those features here. I've got a quick little sample model that I can I can go through. So the first thing I want to do is just show how we can kind of hide and move some of those parts. So like we were saying here, we've got this CAD display and it's got all the different CAD entities in it. And it's got a little bit of cross highlighting. So if I click here, it'll highlight over here. So if I want to just turn that off, if I want to exclude it from the analysis, you'll notice if I had just hide the, if I just exclude it from the analysis and not turn off the visibility, you can see it's kind of got a transparent view, you can't pick on it, but you can also turn off the visibility so it's completely hidden as well. So I'll just do this for the two tubes. And what I'll do is I'll replace those with, let's just say some sort of a spring damper type system. And that'll allow us to show off some of the connectors. So if I go down here to create my connector, try click and say new, we've got the, uh, the rigid body and you can see the new pointed center option here. So if I want to, I can just create, select a surface here and it'll use the point at center. And I can use some of the nice little commands here to create a duplicate. So it'll create another one here. All I have to do is clear that and I can grab another one. Let's zoom in a bit here. And I can do the same thing. Clear this guy, move into this one. Create a duplicate, clear this one. And then create this last one here. And if I want to do something new, if I want to connect these points up with like a spring or something like that, I can just switch this over to a spring now. And I've got the points already created. I've got, I can enter a stiffness. Let's say this is one e to the nine. This is, let's say a thousand and then one e to the nine. So it'll be stiff in those directions, but in the vertical direction that the axis of the spring is operating in, we'll actually have a, a nominal stiffness value. And then we can connect those two together with our spring. And then we can actually create another spring on the fly here, just selecting these two points. And we've quickly replaced those entities with something that's analytical. So now we don't have to have all that surface contact. We don't have to have, um, you know, that represented with solid elements. We've got something really quick and easy. And it's, it's kind of the concept of, of being able to, to apply.
that there. Uh, one of the other things that we did was um, the, 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 the loading. So if I just go in here and I switch over to my uh, remote force, let's say I wanted to apply a load here to the top of this head tube. And then we wanted to use it in the, um, the, the head tube coordinate system. So if I just select this here, well, you'll see that we've got the, uh, the head tube. And if I scroll out, it's right here at the bottom. So you can see it'll automatically update. If I switch my different coordinate systems, it'll show the different coordinate systems in the different locations. So now the load that we're applying is gonna be relative to that direction. So I know based on my model, if I wanted to put this, let's say a thousand, now you see the units here are pound force. We can just type in Newtons and it'll automatically convert that for us. And if we want to, we can also use the coordinates. And I know coordinates of mine are zero, 30, 10 here. So if I click OK, or I can use my display here, let's just use that. It kind of shows that load that's off here representing, you know, some sort of a, a load being implied at the handlebars. So it's very easy to quickly and apply those without going in and creating a custom uh, point. You know, you can use custom units, whatever you want here, and it'll automatically do all that stuff for us. And if we go back and edit the load, um, you can see that it's converted that for us as well. All right, the last big thing that we did with these types of kind of solid assembly models is we uh, created the ability to create a, um, a mesh control on solids. So this is a new box here. Um, and the, the idea here is we've got the, the mesh settings where you can specify a global mesh size on all the components. And now you actually have a uh, mesh size for solid parts. So if you wanted to say, I want a coarse mesh overall in these five areas, but I know my load's gonna be right here in this area. I can do a finer mesh just in this solid part and we can refine that mesh locally. Or you can do the opposite. You could say, you know, it's gonna have a fine mesh everywhere, but and this is gonna be a kind of a, a general, general um, mesh size here. All right, so let's switch back um, to the next part here. And let's go into the interoperability that we built. So the big thing here is the, we've, we're introducing this concept of idealizations and idealizations in FEA is something that's been there forever. Uh, so it's not something new that we're, we're creating, but it's something I think is very important for improving the workflow that we have for NCAT. So uh, in case anybody doesn't know, idealizations is the process of taking your real world part and somehow representing it with the best mathematical model. So what we did this year is we spent a lot of time um, setting up the foundations for idealizations and we started and with this release you see that we started to add some of those um, that capability there so the first thing that we did was with solids so we streamlined that workflow it'll automatically bring in the materials it'll automatically bring in the physical property for you and it'll assign it to the right components um, for for shells we introduced mid surf mid surfacing as well as offset surface and it automatically creates the thickness for you it, even if it's a, a mid surface or if it's an offset surface. And then the last thing that we did this, this release was we added support for frame generator. So you can take a frame generator model, it'll automatically convert it to beams and you can uh, start working with it that way. And I think, yeah, let me show just kind of what that looks like as well. So I've got another model here. It's just a simple little frame model that we built with frame generator. For those of you who've been with us for a number of years, you might recognize this as one of our kind of tutorials that we use. Um, so if I just switch over to the NCAD environment, the first thing you'll see is it will take all those solids and it'll represent them with, with line elements. And it'll create a custom uh, idealization now. So it's not, we're, you'll never see the, the physical property. It's, it's all been rep represented by the, uh, the idealization. And so it'll create a custom one of these for every single one of those parts. If you want to, you can come in and edit this. It'll show you where it's at. Uh, it'll also allow you to pick, you know, like the type of elements you want to use, bars or beams. And if you click the view properties, it'll show you that cross section. So if you want any information about what that is, or if you want to actually update this cross section, you can create your own property input and define your own cross section and replace it with whatever you want. Uh, if you don't like this and you want to go back to those idealizations, all you have to do is remove these from an analysis or create a new analysis and it'll use a solid idealization by de default. All right, so the next thing, let's just 
go in and um, set this model up to run so I can show you a couple other things. So I'll just create some quick constraints here on the fly. Just put some down here and here. Click OK. Uh, and then if we do, um, let's just do a, uh, a gravity load. So I'll do, um, let's do in the y direction, negative 386.4. Let's say I wanted 6 Gs instead of 1. I just multiply times 6. So it makes things a lot easier using those uh, units and math capabilities that we got there. Let's do this as a gravity instead of a force. Uh, actually, going back to that force, one of the other things that we added is this total force. We've had the ability to do the total force, but it always popped up. You know, so you could put a total force even though you only had one entity selected. We made that a little bit more intuitive now that if you have, you know, only one entity selected, it only shows up. It won't let you select it. But once you add that second one, then you can decide whether or not you want to use that total force or not. So let's go back and put the gravity load in there. Click OK. All right. Um, so let's let's go ahead and run this. You know, I haven't kind of walked through some of the, the results things that we've got. I'll go back to that those slides in just a little bit here, but let's go ahead and run this. Another thing that we've done is you know, we're going to go through a bunch of them here, but when I click the run key, you see that the mesh wasn't generated beforehand. So what it did is it knew that it needed to generate the mesh. It went through and did that for us. Um, the other thing that we've done is we've set it up so that in CAD results are now stored in its own folder inside this working directory. So let's say this model was in on my desktop. What it would do is it would create another folder in there that said NCAD, and it would store all of the uh, analysis data in that file rather than having it in your root um, inventor folder. So I think that helps clean up a little bit. And now that the analysis file name and the results file name, they have a unique um, naming convention that it uses. So it makes it very difficult to bring in results from a different analysis. So we've had customers in the past that will run an analysis, you know, remesh the model, and then it'll import the results, and it comes out looking like a weird spike ball because the, the nodes and elements don't exactly line up. And so um, what we've done is we've added the intelligence, so it will identify if it's a model that matches with the one you're looking at on the screen. So you'll get warnings and other feedback to make sure that you're bringing in the right results for that. Um, so. The other thing we'll notice is if I go to start look at these results, we made it so that the toolbar here will update when you switch to the uh, results environment. So I'm going to double click on this here. Try not to watch the screen. I know that's where the, the magic happens. But what we've done is we'll hide the mesh and we'll expand the results out of it. So we know we're kind of in a post processing mode uh, so that we can view that. So if anyone wonders what happens to that mesh and where it went, um, it's, it's just because we're switching into the results kind of environment here. And once you switch back out, you can go back and start making changes to those models. So this toolbar is a little bit more interactive now. It'll update depending on what you're trying to accomplish. All right, so the cool thing that we did is this one of my, another one of my favorites here is, is addition of the mini toolbar. And there's a lot of different things that go into it. Um, one of the things that we've done to help narrow down on the type of results that you want to look at is we've added this filter. So we've got the filter here in the mini toolbar. We also have the filter here in the results if you go in and edit it. So, you know, you can quickly switch between stress or displacement and it's going to update that with, you know, whatever you want to look at there. Um, so it makes it very easy to get into the, the results that you might want to look at. So instead of wading through, you know, a thousand different output vectors. Uh, another really cool thing about the um, the mini toolbar is the ability to highlight and select your units here. So another request that we've had for customers from a num for a number of years is the ability to display the units on the screen and switch them. So you know if you want to to view the results in a different unit system, it's very easy to do so. There's a couple settings here if you want to control where the, the the bar shows up. You know the font here. I've kind of played with mine a little bit. You can go in and and change those settings as well. Uh, the other thing I want to show before we get too far into it is the, the new object visibility. So this is, you know, we've had the ability to go into your default settings. You can turn entities on and off. You can go into the results. You can kind of hide things, turn things on and off. Like, for instance, here, if I wanted to turn off my max and min markers, I can do that. I want to hide my loads and constraints, you know, because I'm viewing my results. I can do that very quickly through the object visibility. 
and that's for this model. And so if I close and I open up a different model, but it will overwrite the settings that we have in our, in our, our um, plot contours. So it makes it very easy to kind of keep track of what you want uh, and, and display that there. So the last thing, you know, the, the last big thing that we've got for the results is we've updated the probes. So um, we always had the ability in Nastran NCAT if you right clicked on the nodes or elements to kind of go and query what was happening at each one of those things. One of the new things that we added with the inventor functionality is the ability to, to, to pick a probe. And, and now if you click on it, once you have that probe highlighted, it will leave it there. And so if you want to as well, you can move those probes around. For instance, if you wanted to see you know, whatever result you wanted to look at, it looked a little better if you had it kind of moved around a little bit, you can do that. And then we also have the ability to delete those probes as well. So if you want to, to remove those from the screen. So that's one of the, the, the new things there as well. So let's go back to the, uh, the presentation here and see if there's anything I forgot. Um, so we've got all the, uh, the ribbon, the toolbar up. We've also, so for our fatigue plots, you know, we had the results where they were displayed um, going red was the, uh, um, the highest number of cycles. And so we switched that around. So now that's, that's blue. So it'll actually show you where uh, red, where you expect the failure to occur first. Um, talked about the um, associativity. Uh, we have discrete results. I don't know if anyone's ever run into that. It's, it's probably more, most common in some of the, the uh, composite workflows. So if you're doing composites and you want to see exactly kind of the direction that the material failed in, it'll tell you, you know, uh, zero, one or whatever it might be, or, you know, if it was a, a, t a specific type of failure. Now, instead of giving you a number like a zero or a one, it'll actually tell you exactly what that, that um, descriptor is. So it makes a lot more sense instead of having to go back and look things up in the reference manual. Uh, and then for those of you guys that are running dynamic analysis uh, and specifically looking for grid point force balance, we've had a way of punching that into the deck, but now it's uh, it's directly supported in the user interface. All right, that kind of covers a lot of the new features that we've done. Um, just for those of you who are always looking for more information, there's a couple great ways that we can get in touch with us and kind of follow what we've been up to. Um, We've got a, a great newsletter that comes out with a lot of the, the content and updates and everything that we're doing. Uh, I definitely invite everybody to go check out the, uh, the forums. Uh, we've got a lot of people that are there and a lot of great experts like Andrew that are out there helping out and keeping uh, base with, with the people that have questions and following up with them. And then we also have a blog where it gives us a little bit of a chance to let our hair down and do some more of the fun stuff with the software. So, you know, th that's where we end up with uh, which superhero wins in a fight and let's figure out how we can solve that with NCAD. So uh, it's a little bit more fun. If anyone wants to know where to find all these things, it's on simhub.autodesk.com. You can just sign up with a newsletter. You can see what's happening in the forums and you can check out the blog. So I invite everybody to go ahead and do that. And I believe with that, open it up for some question and answer. Awesome, thanks Mitch. So we did yeah, get a it. few questions few questions here. Um, so the first one was about um, which versions of Inventor you can use with uh, Nastran NCAD 2017. Yeah, um, so, so the answer to that is... Go ahead. Go ahead, Mitch. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, NCAD is pretty straightforward with Inventor. It's it, We support the, the same year version that Inventor runs in. So if, it, if you're using Inventor 2017 you, or NCAD 2017, you need Inventor 2017. You want to in, run NCAD 2016, that'll run with Inventor 2016. So we just match the, uh, the year there. Awesome. And the next question here is, um, can NAS training cab be used for stress strain analysis as a result of thermal loads? Um, so the answer to that is, is, is yes. I don't know if you have, if you can pull up NCAD Mitch and maybe we can just go over a uh, thermal analysis. Just walk through kind of what that would look like. Yeah. yeah. So well, there's um, two things is first you would set up the first analysis as a, um, let's just do a new, uh, analysis here. 
And so you set up the first one as just your, your standard thermal analysis. So you have steady state heat transfer, transient heat transfer, um, and you can put, apply your, your temperature loads and whatever you might need for that. And then once you get those results, you can do that for a simpler, if you wanted to run a linear static analysis, you could do a new load uh, and that would be from output. And so now what you can do is you can specify the results file that you want to use from your thermal analysis, and that will be used to create the temperatures. Uh, and if you had an output set that you wanted to pick from that, let's say you did a, a transient analysis and you wanted to view a specific time step that was like your worst case scenario, and then you can apply that as a load for your thermal stress. So that works out pretty well for doing a, kind of a, a two-step multi-physics analysis where you do the, tr the thermal analysis first and then you just map those loads, or sorry, not map, but um, take those temperature loads and apply it to the same model. So we do this, it's, it's one for one, so the mesh has to match between the two analyses. We don't do any uh, conversion. So if you wanna keep the same nodes and elements between those two runs. Great, I, I think that answered Eric's question there. Um, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to use the, the box on the, uh, the right-hand side and we'll, we'll do our best to answer those live. Um, so we'll give everyone a, another minute there if they wanna pick uh, my brain or Mitch's brain. So while we're giving everyone a, a second there, um, one great feature of the, uh, the community is the idea station. Um, so I, I think Mitch, you probably go there on a, a weekly basis to look at all the, the new posts and things like that. And a lot of those suggestions get wrapped into the new, new release. So I think with the SIP release, it was the number two or number three um, ask on the idea station was to have those bearing loads. And that was, you know, some of the functionality we added there. So if you ever have a, a feature request or an idea you think would be great um, to have in an Astron NCAD, I definitely recommend going over to the idea station, uh, maybe taking a look at some of the other ideas other um, users have suggested you might find something that you could find uh, really beneficial that you hadn't thought of before. Yeah, we're always checking those out. I mean, I think I get the alerts as soon as somebody posts, but <laughs> we're always looking at that as one of the, the key sources of uh, updates when we're looking at what we want to add for the next release. That's, yeah, that's a great point, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, all right, well, I guess that wraps up this presentation today. I want to thank everyone for, for joining us. And um, if you, oh, looks like we got a, a last minute question there. Um, can the stress analysis be run on a linkage mechanism as it runs through the system's full range of motion? And can a plot be generated to show the points of high stress? The answer is yes, but the real answer is that's probably, NCAT is probably not the best bet for doing that type of a thing. Because um, we're going to be doing a full uh, nonlinear transient analysis, you know, with everything having some sort of stiffness. And, you know, we've done it before. Uh, there's some animations out there you'll see where we did a, like a full four, um, four cylinder engine with a nonlinear transient analysis with solid elements. And I think that one took probably, you know, a couple days to solve back in, you know, 10, 15 years ago when we created it. Uh, so it's definitely possible to do something like that where it's probably not recommended, especially if you've got the dynamic simulation capabilities inside of Inventor. That's much better suited for solving those types of problems. Now, the cool thing is if you want to, you can take uh, those results so you can run through it, get the forces of that analysis. Uh, it, and with dynamic simulation, it will automatically convert. It'll, you can set that up so that it brings it into Inventor, Inventor simulation. And one of the things that we've done with NCAD in the last year is we've added the ability to import the inventor simulation data directly into NCAD. So it's a little bit, a couple different hops to get there, but you can run the dynamic simulation and inside of inventor, get the forces and everything that you need to bring that data into NCAD and do a, a stress analysis on that. So that's probably the quickest and the fastest way to get those types of results. It's a great question. 
All right, and it looks like we got one more question here. It looks um, related to the, the top idea station post, Mitch. Um, could you give us any idea of when brick elements will be incorporated in, in, in CAD? That's a tough one. I mean, um, you know, one of the things I like to say is Autodesk has a lot of meshing technology. And from what I've seen, there's a lot of stuff that we haven't released that's, that's out there and a lot of great stuff. And so for NCAD, what we're doing is we're kind of holding fast. We're waiting for uh, to see what, what, what comes out of that. And um, we'll, we'll adopt it whenever we think it's right. It might be, it, I, I can't say exactly when we'll do it, but that's something that's definitely on our radar. Um, as far as trying to get, you know, high quality elements in there, that's always something that we're looking towards is getting, you know, we want to be able to, our goal is to build the best mathematical model we can uh, and do it as easily as possible. So um, I, I, we're, we're always keeping, I, I know it's, and, I, and there's, it's not just you guys in the community that are doing it. We've got people internally that hound me about it as well. So I definitely appreciate that. And uh, I, I, I can't give you a, a hard date on when we'll have it, but we're definitely got our eyes focused on it. All right, and the, the last one, uh, where is the best place to download the What's New presentation? Um, so I'm gonna show up my screen here for just a second. And I've got a link here in my presentation that everyone can use. Um, and it's autodesk.box.com forward slash Nastran NCAD IQ. Um, and there you'll find all the previous presentations that we've done. Um, and within the next couple of days, we'll probably go ahead and throw up uh, the presentation here as well for everyone to download. And with that, I wanna say uh, thanks again for everyone for joining us today. If you have any further questions, feel free to, to uh, reach out to us on the um, Autodesk forums, or if you're a customer on subscription for NAS Training CAD, um, if you've got some technical questions, um, certainly don't hesitate to open up a, a support case with us, and we'll be glad to help you out.